Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great beginning to your day. Today is the 2nd of Tammuz, and tonight is the 20th, 29th yard site of our dear Rebbe, the Lubavitcher of a blessed memory. And I'm on my way to New York, where I will be praying at his gravesite on the day of his yard site, which is the customary thing we do at the gravesite of Tzaddikim on the day of their passing. But I wanted to share with you a thought and connect it to this week's Torah portion. So this week we learn about Korach and Moses. And the rebellion that Korach tried to make against Moses and eventually it failed. But sometimes from the contrast of Moses and Korach, you could see from Korach the contrast to him and who Moses was and what he accomplished. We all know the story of Korach. He tried to rebel against Moses and the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed him and his entire group. But when you read the verse, the Torah tells us that the earth opened up and it swallowed Korach and all their houses. Their, Korach and his men and all their houses. And the question is, they lived in the desert. In the desert, no one has a house. So what does it mean it swallowed Korach and his men and all their houses? And the Ibn Ezra, the great Ibn Ezra, one of the commentaries says a beautiful interpretation. It says that what the Torah is telling us is that not only was Korach swallowed, but his entire household, which means his reputation and the legacy he would leave and the person, the reputation he would leave after he passed on. You know, there's two homes we build. There's the physical home we build and then there's the legacy we build and the reputation we build through the actions and deeds we do. And Korach, through his rebellion against Moses and God, not only did his physical body pass away, but his reputation, his legacy, the person he would become and the memory that he would have was also gone. You know, tonight is the Rebbe's yard site. And... The Rebbe, coming out of the Holocaust, where the Jewish community was decimated, Chabad itself was decimated, the Rebbe revolutionized Judaism and brought so much hope and so much possibility and opportunity to Jews all over the world. You won't find a Jew anywhere in the world that hasn't been impacted by Chabad. If it was for five minutes when they were on a trip to Thailand, or when they were in China, or when they were in the islands, or in their own community, but if on campus, you won't find a Jew that hasn't been impacted by the Rebbe. And yet, the Rebbe had no physical children. But the Rebbe always said that all these people who are impacted and touched by the Rebbe's life, those are his children. If you think about today, 29 years after the Rebbe's passing, and you think about the tens of thousands of Menachem Mendels running around the world, the tens of thousands of Chaya Mushkas, and all those that don't have the Rebbe and Rebbe's name, but continue his legacy, and continue the ideas and the vision that the Rebbe strived for, that's what true household and children are. And that's the message that we learn from the contrast of Korach and Moshe. Korach was swallowed up in the earth. That's called Bateim. All their houses. No one ever heard about his family and their impact anymore. But yet you look at Moshe. You look at the Rebbe. And you look at great leaders. And their legacy continues. You know the famous story about Eddie Jackson, who was a dear friend of Harry Truman, and who, through his haberdash business, and he went countless times to persuade Harry Truman to vote for the state of Israel. And the story goes that when Eddie Jacobson was dying, and he was on his deathbed, he turned to his daughter and he said, I'm so sorry. You know, all the money I would have left you, the inheritance, that I would have left you. I spend all that money going back and forth from my home in the South to Washington, D.C. It was so expensive to go and I kept on going. 
to persuade Harry Truman to support the state of Israel. And now I have no money to leave you. And his daughter looked at him and says, Daddy, you might not be leaving us an inheritance, but you're leaving us a legacy. You might not be leaving us a physical home, but you're leaving us a reputation. You're leaving us a character of nobility, of kindness, of caring for his people. That's the story of the Rebbe. I had the merit as a little child, and I'll continue about this tomorrow on the actual yard site, of growing up at the Rebbe's feet and watching the Rebbe's love and commitment and kindness and care for every human being. That's the legacy the Rebbe lives, and that lives on forever. Through his children that he left sprinkled around the world, 5,000 couples, and each of their people that they impact, we continue that legacy. Let's remember that our reputation and our deeds and our impact is what we truly leave to this world. Have a great day.